Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, um, I'm trying to figure out how to use Twitter, uh, Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be with y'all tonight to share about my kindergarten lessons for the week to give you sort of a bird's eye view, an overview of all of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons that I'm teaching in the next week, and also to share with you some of my favorite books and puppets and little instrument tricks and things that I'm doing um, as I focus mostly on kindergarten for this lesson. But before I get to um, kindergarten and I share a little bit about that, I wanted to um, just talk about a couple things that you might sort of keep thinking about in the next couple days. Um, I've shared a little bit of, on Instagram and in my Facebook group about um, this book. And I know it's backwards. <laughs> Sorry, I'm using my FaceTime camera, so it's a little backwards. But uh, it's called Ella, Queen of Jazz by Helen Hancox. It's a really wonderful book. Um, I, I love it because I think the pictures are really fun and engaging. Um, I think the art is just beautiful, but it tells the story of Ella Fitzgerald. Um, it tells the story about her singing career and how... Um, she wasn't always super successful, and it talks about um, how well she did in her, sort of her relationship with Marilyn Monroe. It's, it's a really cool book, and I used it for sub plans, and I um, talked a little bit about this in the Facebook group um, that I started a couple weeks ago called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, and I shared a little bit about this, but I wanted to share this one because this one's a great one, and also another book that I love about Ella Fitzgerald both of these books are great for Black History Month. This one is, honestly, it's for older kids. It's not for the younger kids. Ella Queen of Jazz is perfect for K-1-2. This one is great for a little bit older. This one's by Andrea Davis P uh, Pinkney and Brian Pinkney. Um, and this one, um, the pictures are cool, but there are a lot more words. So this is one you have to take a little bit slower and it would be harder for younger kids. But it talks about how she starts out in Harlem um, it goes through her life as she um, gets a little bit more famous, as she sings. This one says, Jamming at Yale. Um, and it, it really gives a more in-depth sort of view of Ella's life and um, Stomping at the Savoy. And I mean, this one goes a lot more in-depth. So if you wanted something to sort of, I mean, if you wanted to start with this for younger or even older kids and then supplement with this, this would be a great book to have on hand too. Both of these books by Ella Fitzgerald are really fantastic, or about Ella Fitzgerald, by Ella Fitzgerald, about Ella Fitzgerald are really fantastic. Um, so I put links to these in the, the video notes. So if you're interested and you can't find it, either send me, send me a, a direct message um, on Facebook or Instagram or email, and I'll send you the links. But they're also linked on that link page. While I'm talking about books, I wanted to show you a couple more books that I use for Black History Month that I think are just really cool. Um, this one is called Before John Was a Jazz Giant, and I might have shared about this one before. Um, this one is by Carol Boston Weatherford. I think the pictures are just amazing in this one, and it really is made for younger kids. Before John Was a Jazz Giant, he heard hand bones knocking in grandma's pots, daddy strumming the ukulele, and mama cranking the phonograph. I've shared about this one before, I think, several weeks ago, but what I love about it is that I can pair this with a video about John Coltrane or um, another sort of exploratory activity about John Coltrane or just about jazz artists in general, and this goes really well into a sub plan, whether it's during Black History Month or any time through the year. This is a great sort of a jumping off point um, this one was Coretta Scott King Award. Um, I don't, it says honor. I don't know if it won, but it, but it definitely is a really great book. And so this is a great one to check out. There's a link for this one as well. Um, here's one more that's great for Black History Month or really any time of the year. And this one's about Leontine Price, Voice of a Century. I think I shared about this one too. This is actually by the same author as John was, when John, sorry, before John was a jazz giant. Um, and this one, though, is for an, an older grade, um, and it talks about um, her listening to the Met on the afternoons. It talks about her growing up. And again, sort of like that first Ella Fitzgerald book, I love this because it doesn't just say like, oh, she was famous and yada, yada, yada. It talks about how, uh, you know, she had to work for it. She had to work to get there and all the things and the struggles and everything that she went through. Um, if you don't know actually about who Leontine Price is, she's a, she was an amazing um, singer and um, opera singer, and you should check her out, but also check out this book. It's a really great one. 
Um, and so those are great books to have. Like I said, I use them for Black History Month or any time throughout the year. Um, so the ones about Ella and about Leontine are great because guess what? March is Women's History Month and Women's Awareness Month. So these are great books to, if you're like, oh man, I missed the boat on Black History Month. Well, get them now and use them next month. But like I said, you can also not just use them for Black History Month or lessons during this month. You can use them any time in the year, but also they're great to put in sub plans any time of the year. Um, one more to think about as you're thinking about Women's History Month, um, this book called Celia Cruz, Queen of Salsa is another great book that you can use, again, in your lesson plans or if you put them in sub plans. Um, and this one talks about Celia Cruz and how she started in Havana and how her, again, it's, it's less about her being super famous and more about her growing up and how she would sing and people would sort of affirm that, but she really wasn't sure and you know, how she had to sort of grow into it and become more comfortable singing and, and being um, on stage, honestly. So it's another really, really great book. Again, beautiful pictures, um, really cool storyline. And again, this one is also awesome because probably it would introduce a lot of kids to a person that they maybe have never heard of before, a type of music they've never heard of before, because a lot of my kids don't know what salsa is. And so this is a, a great sort of a jumping off point. And again, you could pair this book, you could have a, a substitute teacher read it. And then if you found a really cool video that went along that maybe told a little bit about Celia Cruz or about salsa, um, you know, a lot of times, those um, like um, Macmillan McGraw Hill or uh, Pearson or whatever, those textbook series will have like DVDs or videos or whatever that go along that say like jazz and salsa and the blues and whatever, and they give a little breakdown. If you had one for salsa music, this would be great to pair with that and to put in a lesson plan or sub, sub plan. So these are a few books. Um, I have linked all of these in the video notes if you're interested. Um, these are great, like I said, to get now all the female books before March starts, before Women's History Month, but you could get them for next year, for Black History Month, for any time of the year, and all of those are linked. And if you can't find those links, send me a message and I will get them to you. Um, but you can just direct message me on Facebook or Instagram or send me an email. My email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com. Okay, so two more things. Um, well, really one more. Well, two more things <laughs> before I get into my lesson plans. Um, some things to think ahead. Um, I can now say that there's going to be a Teachers Pay Teachers sale tomorrow and Wednesday. So if you're someone who uses resources from TBT um, and you're interested in all of those, there's a big sale that starts tomorrow. And if you use the, um, the code TikTok in checkout, if you put that as your like promo code, you get 25% off almost everything on the site, which is awesome. Um, I've been working like feverishly to update my Note Neighborhood sets. So if you've ever used anything of mine that's the Note Neighborhood, which is the those silly stories about notes that, that really draw kids in, and I've shared about them on here before. If you've ever used those before, I have updated a lot of them. I, I touched basically every PowerPoint, went and looked and edited and changed and did stuff. But a lot of those expansion pack ones that only had like an introductory PowerPoint, I've added a practice PowerPoint. And so there, there are a lot of new things in there. So if you've already bought one before, go back and check. But if you've not, guess what? There's a sale starting tomorrow. <laughs> you can try it. And actually one of those Note Neighborhood PowerPoints is free if you wanna just like see what it's all about. Okay, so if you were interested in any links or anything like that, um, send me a message. All right, so those are just a couple things I wanted to just chat about before I got into lessons, all those great books that you could get, um, and there's a sale starting tomorrow on TPT, so just so you know that. All right, so let me get into my lesson plans for the week. As always, thanks to everyone who leaves questions and comments along the way. Um, it's harder for me to go back and comment on Instagram, but I try and go back and comment on um, Facebook as much as I can, even weeks and months after the video has ended. I try and go back and comment on that so that so we can continue that conversation, but also so that I can still answer your questions. So if you're watching this video like three months, three years from now, I will try and come back and answer questions if you leave a comment there. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on kindergarten this week. Um, so I'm not gonna do a quick run through of that. I'm gonna do a deep dive of that in just a second. So I'm gonna just zoom past that. And actually I'm sort of gonna zoom past first and second too because I am within a month of doing concerts for those classes. So really at this point, it's like finishing up what we haven't learned and doing run throughs of all the songs that we have. So first grade is doing um, a barnyard concert that I have yet to name. 
And all of you guys gave me great, great, great ideas for what I could name it, like Barnyard Bonanza and All Around the Barnyard. And I just have not landed on one. And I really need to because that's on the 14th. Um, so, but my Barnyard songs, all of those are sort of all finished. Today we did, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we did some run-throughs of those. And um, I think we added in the last one, which was bingo, which they already knew, really. And so the way we're going to do it is maybe just a little bit different for the concert to sort of spiff it up and make it exciting, more exciting for parents. But all the songs that we've done, I've not, I know I've talked about before. I think I actually did a whole video on that upcoming concert. Second grade, um, we also are getting ready for a concert. It's two weeks after the first grade concert, so the end of March. Uh, and I... I'm doing that one about an un underwater program. I think I'm gonna call it Commotion in the Ocean. And we're doing a, a lot of fun songs. We're doing Eyes the By That Build the Boat, which is a Newfoundland folk song. We're doing um, Down the River, Oh, Down the River, Oh, Down the River We Go. Um, the River is Up, The Channel is Deep. And that is another folk song. We're doing a song from Lynn Kleiner's book, SOS Songs of the Sea, called Larry the Lobster. We're doing a grubby pirate song. We're doing a baby shark song. And um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think there's one more in there that I'm, oh yeah, Charlie Over the Ocean. And so all of these fun songs, I try and make all of my, my concerts, especially primary concerts, all songs that we would sing in the classroom. Um, I see Caitlin's asking, do they just sing with actions or do we add, add instruments and other things? What, what I do, since I have so many kids, um, I have about 200 per grade level that could be there at the concert, and a lot of them do show up. Um, it's not really feasible for me to try and get everyone on instruments or everyone cycled through. So what I basically do is I have five or six songs for, again, for first and second grade concerts coming up, and we don't use risers because we won't, wouldn't fit, and there aren't enough in the school. So we're, we're standing in the gym, and what, what I do is that for each song, one or two classes will be like the featured class. So if there's a folk dance, or if there are instrument parts, or if there's an action part, or an action something that they do, those two classes would step forward and they're the featured class. So that means that everyone can sing all the songs. If it's a stand and sing action thing, they can all do it from their own place. But like for Larry the Lobster, we're gonna be moving around and doing the crab walk. And for um, Eyes the Bye That Built the Boat, we're gonna add in um, a stretchy band and a parachute and a little folk dance thing that I made up. And though there'll be kids coming forward to do that. so. If you're a parent of one of these kids, you're gonna see them singing all the songs and you're gonna see that they're gonna be featured doing a dance or an instrument or something on at least one of those songs. So that's sort of, Caitlin, I don't know if that really answers your question, but um, it means that kids are doing more than just standing and singing. On at least one song, they'll be moving, like big time moving, but there'll always be actions and singing. Um, they'll always be participating. They'll never just sit out for any long extended period of time if that makes sense. And I always try and sort of structure these concerts so that I'm pulling songs that they would be doing in that grade level anyway, because I see my kids maybe 20 times a year, and to take six or seven of those class periods to prepare for a concert with songs we'll never ever do again, that doesn't make sense. So I try and pull out songs and activities and things that I can sort of teach like normal, and then when it comes time for the concert, go, hey, remember that song? We're gonna add this movement thing or we're going to do whatever or you're going to just take what it is that we already do in class and you're just going to do it for our parents so you got to step forward and do it in front of everyone in the on the gym floor and so it's really it's sort of like an informance but i can't fit all those parents into my classroom and trying to get them to come would be a nightmare so um i hope that sort of answers your question a little bit caitlin um i'll talk maybe on another video about concerts and my thoughts about that Third grade, uh, we're doing, when they come in, we do a little solfege review. We're doing a version of Dinah um, that came from this book, As American as Apple Pie, uh, by Jeff Kriske and Randy Delellis. And um, it's, these are the guys who wrote Game Plan. They wrote a, just a whole series of really, really fantastic books that are ORF inspired. A lot of them have ORF arrangements. A lot of them have um, lesson ideas and action and form and other different things that go along uh, with them. This is maybe, I think, the best purchase I've ever made as a music teacher. It's it's just chock full of really, really great 
resources. I'm gonna take that back. It's the second best purchase. I think the best purchase I ever made as a music teacher was getting my ORF levels. And I paid for the first one out of pocket and I had my district pay for the second one and a grant for the third. But the first one, it was absolutely worth all the money I paid for it. But this comes as a close second because it was way less expensive than the ORF level, but um, it's also just super great and you can use it anytime all throughout the year. Lots of different grade levels. But the, the version of Dyna that we do um, sort of is modeled after this um, and is, it's a really, really great lesson in this book. So once we've done Dyna, there's a fun video online um, called like the Banjo Brothers or the Doolin Banjo Brothers or something where the kids can see a guitar and see a banjo, because in Dinah we talk about a banjo. So the cool thing in this video is the kid, it, it's these brothers, and one plays a guitar, like a riff on the guitar, and the kid on the banjo parrots it back on banjo, and they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, which is great, because kids see them playing and can hear the different sounds, and so they're able to sort of differentiate. By the time they start playing together, the kids can already orally tell the difference between the two because um, because they can they can see them when they're played. So it's a super cool, um, super cool video. And Karen has already linked it. I hope that's one, I don't know if that's exactly the one, I'll, I'll go back and check that later. But super great video um, to pair with that. So they do that, we watch the video. Uh, my instrument alphabet on the wall, the letter B is actually B for banjo. So they can see a banjo there. Um, and then we move around and do some other things. I know it's silly, but there's a quick transition and after we're, we're moving in the Dyna um, lesson part, so we're actually moving around the room, we end up moving into a shape of a circle and um, we sit down and do um, a song from Ghana called Sansa Croma. And it's a, a fun song, it's a, a passing song. And so we end up passing, uh, you can pass anything you want, but we end up actually passing egg shakers. You could do it with rocks, that's the traditional way. You could do it with whatever, stones, balls of paper, whatever you want. Um, but that's sort of where we end up. And I use, um, I made a favorite folk song, sort of a teacher resource kit for that song. And I pull that out because I want kids to see the bird that we're talking about in the song, because Sansa Chroma is a, an eagle um, or a hawk. And so I want them to see that. And also I want them to see, it. it's a song that comes from Ghana and it's in another language. So I want them to see elements of that so that they can sort of, you know, like understand where the song came from and why we're doing it. And so that favorite folk song kit gives, you know, the map of where it's from and it gives um, information about the people, where the song comes from and the bird that we're singing about and, and gives some explanation for some of those things and shows the vocabulary or words and all that. So um, while we're sitting, we just sort of look up and do that and then um, turn back and do our group passing. Um, and Karen's saying she does rhythm passing sticks. I've never tried it with sticks. I've only ever done it with rocks or egg shakers and um, other sort of one object. I'd be interested to see how sticks work. And then I I've told you before on other weeks that my fourth grade and fifth grade lessons currently are the same. Next year they won't be, but um, this year they're the same. And that's because um, fit we haven't had ukuleles before. So next year, what we've done here in fourth grade, we will build upon, but this year they're all beginners. So they're all sort of on the same level. So this week, what we're doing, um, I went to a really fabulous um, workshop at um, Texas Music Educators when I was there to present. After I was done presenting, I was able to go to workshops. And my friend, uh, Lorelai Batiste Long, who is in Texas, she is brilliant. If you have the chance, she goes all over the country to do these ukulele workshops. If you have the chance to go see her, you should go see her. I think she's at Alabama, Alabama or if she'll work next week. I think she has another workshop like the following week. I know she was out last week. She is so fabulous. Um, and so you should see her, but I went to her ukulele workshop and I was super inspired. And, um, I, what we're doing in this lesson that's a little bit different, we're doing some finger exercises that she showed, which was super cool. Um, we're going to sort of switch up and I'm gonna give them another strumming pattern so they can strum with their thumb or with their finger. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how to do that because some of my classes have gotten really stiff and, and sort of, I don't know, the way they're strumming, it's definitely hurting their fingers and it's not good for the ukes. And so we're gonna try and just loosen that up and relax, but 
it's just so weird. It's tr trying to get kids to relax to do that. I'd be like, why aren't kids relaxed? I don't know, but they they're, they just get nervous when they get that ukulele in their hand. So trying to get them to relax is one of the things we're doing. And then um, we're also gonna be working on our chord progression and sort of just, the, the mechanics of switching back and forth is really tricky for kids. And so those are really our main goals in this lesson. We're up to three chords. Um, so we're doing this switching between those chords. We're going back and forth. We're doing a couple play alongs. Um, and along the way, we're just working on some of those fundamental things. We're working on making our fingers feel okay on the different chords, switching back and forth, getting more fluent with that, and also just strumming and relaxing into that. And that's what we're doing really with ukulele. That was sort of a very loose explanation of the lesson, but that's, that's where we are and we're going sort of just through those. And I keep coming back and hitting those things throughout the lesson because those are really our biggest goals. Okay, so... Oh, 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 right. And one more thing that I cannot forget to share. I'm really excited because I'm trying something new, um, again, inspired by Lorelai and her workshop. Um, she talked a lot about like strumming patterns and um, getting kids to sort of come up with those on their own. So one of the things I'm doing, I've shown you these before. These are my uh, rhythm sort, uh, food rhythm sort. Um, I shared a lot about these at TMEA. And um, I've shown before in these videos how I use them for centers and how I use them for sort of a whole group, small group activity uh, uh, based around a little made up poem I created called Everything Stew. And I've shown that in this video before. What I'm doing this time is that I'm taking the words, I'm handing out bags to students with the different words. These are just Kate Mon's building bricks if you know um, about those from uh, the really wonderful book Elementaria. But um, these are the, just the building bricks. And what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna choose two words and they're gonna put them next to each other and then they get to strum that pattern. So ta, 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 di, ta, di, ta, 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 di, ta, di. So we're, they're gonna get to play around with, with that to come up with different strumming patterns. And then I'm gonna give them another resource that I just already had created that I was like, well, why don't I pull this out? So this is from my ukulele centers that I've made. Um, sort of ukulele exploration. There's a whole set of task cards that can get, just kids can go through and, and explore like, can you find three ch chords that are only use one finger? Or uh, find a chord that sounds good with this one, which is G, <laughs> can't see that. Um, or can you play all the minor chords? They have a little M next to the letter. These are just exploration cards that I can put in a center. But along with that in the same resource comes these, um, chord flashcards. And so I'm going to hand the three chords we know, which right now we know C, F, and G7. They're going to get those three cards and then they're going to get the, the food word cards. And so they get to choose the order they want to go in with these chords, C, F, G, I hope. <laughs> or maybe they go backwards, C, G, F. Uh, but I hope that it starts and ends on C. And then they're going to um, add in the strumming pattern based on the rhythms, which however they want to do it. Oh my gosh. And Lorelai just Jumped on. Lorelai, I have been talking about how wonderful and fabulous you are. So I hope you put your contact information in here because I have literally just been expounding upon how much I loved your TMEA session and how inspired I am. And I'm using your ideas with my fifth grade ukulele students right now. So, um, like I said, this is sort of all just stuff that I was inspired by. And so I'm sort of bringing things in that, that have worked and I'm trying different stuff. And I'm, I'm just finding that like, I mean, this is my first year ever teaching ukulele, so I'm making mistakes, which is great. Like I went to Lorelei's session, I was like, hmm, I didn't do it that way. Her way is so much better, but I can't start over. So I'm just trying to change things and see how, what things are working. And it's so much fun when I walk around with students and I'm like, why are they doing it this way? You know, what have I said or what have I shown them that's getting them to play this way. It's like anytime you teach something for the first time, you're like, what is it that I said that got them to do it this way? Cause they're all doing it that way. Or, you know, why is it that blah, blah, blah. You know, what is it in a video or Fortnite or something that's, you know, inspired what, when I said this phrase, why do they all start laughing? You know, it's stuff like that. And that's what I'm coming up with with the ukulele is, why are they holding it like that? Why is this one class strumming like this, but none of the others are? What did I say when I was first introducing that? You know, so that's what I'm sort of dealing with is sort of like, okay, I've got issues, I need to fix them. And, and it's so much fun and it's so interesting. And I hope that in the comments, you'll share some of the things that you've learned about ukulele along the way so that we can sort of learn from one another. Like, oh, I realized that I, you know, held it 
too stiffly or I don't know, whatever. There are a lot of fun things that are, that are cool to learn and see what kids come up with. Okay, so kindergarten. Um, there are maybe a lot of puppets in this lesson. You don't have to have them, but I just love puppets. So I, I sort of went crazy with it. So when kids come in um, for all my kindergarten classes, they make a little circle. We have a circle song we've been singing all year long. So it's great that like as they're coming in, they're, they just, they know what to do. They come in, they make a circle. Once we're all in, we sit down. We do a little copying back and forth. We copy some rhythms. We copy vocal exploration. Um, one of my favorite things to do uh, now is that we've we've sort of done back and forth with like, you know, I'll go ooh, and they copy ooh, and I go ooh, and they copy ooh, and we've used our finger for uh, all year long. And this time I plan into every lesson, I go, oh, I do, I do like two, I do the up and I do the down and then I go, you know what class, I am so tired. I have been singing and teaching all day and I'm just so tired. I don't think I can do the voice and the moving at the same time, I'm just too tired. I can only do one or the other. How about I do the singing and can maybe you add in what you think the motion part would be? And they're like, oh yeah. It's like, great, well, let's try one. And I go, whoop, and they go, whoop, great. And then I go, ooh, and they go, ooh. And I always try and sort of trace the shape that I would expect with my eyes the first couple times to just give them like, you're gonna get it right. And they, they usually do great. And it's just so much fun to, again, release that off to them so that now they're not just verbatim copying, they're sort of creating the shape and the thing that they think that vocal sound would make. And it's really interesting, again, because sometimes they don't do what I would expect. Like, woo, you could do woo, or you could do woo, you know, you could do a circle. And so it's, it's just fun to see what kids come up with, and that's sort of one of the, the fun things that I'm doing. And this is great to hand off to kindergarten now because as we get into high and low with a, a range of pitches and also high and low on a staff or high and low, you know, vocal or, or you know, movement, um, this is now giving them the task of, I'm, I'm gonna give you the sound and you need to figure out what, whether it's going high or low. And that giving them this now will be great for later when I ask them to like plot pitches or you know create a path on a piece of paper or something like that. So that's what we do. Um, we do a little bit of solfege. And I have, I, right now only with kinder, I'm only doing so and me. So they do the hand signs and they do the singing and they, they get them confused a lot. And so I have this super wonderful puppet that someone in North Carolina gave to me. Um, and it's super fun, because look, it's a little happy face. And I say, oh, isn't this so nice and so happy? And they go, yes. I'm like, I love this one. It's always just so happy. And they go, wait, oh no. It doesn't look so happy anymore. Oh, how could it be so sad? What did we do to make it so sad? And they go, wait, it's, oh, it's, it's happy. What do I mean? Oh, it's not sad. It's just happy. And then, so it's fun we go through and they, they think that's hilarious that I don't realize at first that it's switching back and forth. But the reason I say this is I go, you know, from this to this is not much of a change, is it? You know, for, for where my hand is, my hand isn't moving very far, but it's making a big change with the emotion right from happy to sad. And you know what, it's the same for so and me. So is not that much different than me. My hand doesn't make a different shape, you know. It only switches where it is. This is so is a little higher, me's a little lower, and then the, the way you show it is different. So you gotta be really careful because, you know, you don't wanna show the wrong thing. You wanna make sure you know so is like a wall and me is like a table. And so we, we just talk a little bit about that, but. It's funny because when I use this, they sort of go, oh, that isn't much of a difference. And so they, they can sort of transfer that idea of there's not, doesn't take much to, to make a big change to see the difference between so and me. That's something I'm trying. I've never tried that before with kids. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it worked for this class today. So a lot of them fixed the so and the me and we became more specific about where it needs to go and what it needs to look like. So that was just sort of something that we started with. In the previous lesson, we learned a song um, from Ollie Ollie Octopus um, about a fish. And I've shared about this before on another video. Um, I have uh, this fun octopus puppet. I love it. Um, what I love about this puppet, you know, I use puppets a lot. And what I do with kids on this puppet is we talk a little bit about an octopus and Ollie checks their facts. 
uh, you know, I say, what do you know about an octopus? And Ollie will listen and will correct them. So if they say like, an octopus has eight tentacles, well then we check on Ollie. Or um, an, octopus, an octopus has two hearts. And I go, well, you can't check on Ollie. You can't see whether he has two hearts or not because you'd have to cut him open and that won't work. Or like they'll say, you know, an octopus has eyes on the side of its head. Yeah, there's one and there's one. And so in the previous lesson, we did a little bit of that. But what I love to say is where's Ollie's mouth? And so then they look on him and I go, here, no. Under here, no. And so we look around and a kid usually says, oh, it's underneath. I go, oh yeah, look can't you see Ollie's mouth? And they go, uh. <laughs> and I said, don't tell Ollie, but he's not real. He's a puppet. So you're not gonna be able to actually see his mouth because he's a puppet, he's not real. And that, like they know that, but me telling them that gives them permission to be like, oh, right. We were pretending and it's not. So then I say, okay, Ollie, show us where your mouth is, where your beak is. And he'll go, oh, it's right here. And we'll go, oh yeah, we can see it. It's right here, right? And the kids are like, mm-hmm. Even though like, you know, it's a puppet. It's not really, not, you're not really gonna see it. So. so anyway, he teaches them this little song. Um, and it goes like this. Fish, fish, little fish. I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish. Get into my mouth. And so, um, yeah, Ollie is a folk manus puppet. I see uh, Sheila's asking about that. Ollie is a folk manus puppet. I have a ton of folk manus. You can get them on um, West Music. You can get them from folk manus. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them anywhere. If you'd like a, to figure out, to see a link of where I get my puppets, um, on the video links, I think I put a link to like, there's a, I have an Amazon page that it just gives me a, ch a way to like organize all these resources. So I have one that has like a ton of puppets and things, little things that I use. So I put that link in there, but you can go and find it and then look it up anywhere online that you want to purchase it. But anyway, um, so he sings that song, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <sighs> And then we do a little game in the previous lesson where they get, well, first Ollie sees a little fish and he goes, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <clears throat> and he eats the little fish. They think that's hilarious. I've actually done a whole live video about um, this process. Um, but eventually each kid gets a little finger puppet. Um, they put it on their finger, their other hand, they're gonna pretend is Ollie and they get a chomp it. And, and that's super fun. So what we do in this lesson is an extension of that. Um, but it all starts with Ollie Octopus and each kid gets a finger puppet to use. So Ollie comes out today in this lesson to uh, sing with the kids the Fish Fish Little Fish song. And I go, hmm, let's see. I wonder if there's another animal in the room who would like that song. Let's see, let's see. And so then I go over and I get my brand new, I love this one. This is not a Folk Manus puppet. This is the puppet company. I saw this at the West Music booth in Missouri and I like freaked out about it. This is a blue whale. It is so big, like, it's so big. Um, anyway, so um, I call her Whale Amina and it took me a while to decide on that name, but we went with Whale Amina. So Whale Amina sings, fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. And they get to make a big chomp for Whale Amina, right? Okay, so then she floats off. Um, then I pull out this one. This one was saved from, I, I worked at a school, they were gonna throw, throw her away. Uh, it was like from a math kit or a reading kit or something that they didn't, didn't use anymore, they're gonna throw it away. So this is Shelly, the crab. And Shelly sings the song and she does her thing. The last one, well not last one, the second to last one I bring out is my, my other newest one. I, I know I have a lot of puppets and I have a puppet problem, but you could either use little pictures or clip art or you could flash something up on your PowerPoint on the screen. You could put um, Beanie Babies, you could do anything. Um, and this is Wendell, he's a narwhal. And I could have named him anything. I thought I would name him Spike, but there's this really cool book called Wendell the Narwhal. And in Wendell the Narwhal, um, Wendell is sad because all the other animals in the ocean can make super fun songs and can sing and can play instruments and he can't. 
He tries, he wants to make music, but he can't do it. He wants to make music, sweet, sweet music. <laughs> It's the cutest book. Anyway, he gets really frustrated and all the other animals um, are singing doing the thing and he taps his tusk on a rock and they all fall silent. And then they decide, Wendell, wait, you can be a great conductor. Uh, anyway, I love this book. <laughs> That's for a different lesson. But um, anyway, so I have Wendell the Narwhal and I introduce him because he's gonna come back with kindergarten to do Wendell the Narwhal book later. So um, anyway, Wendell, he sings the song, get into my mouth. And we talk about narwhals really quickly. And the last one I pull out is this, not a puppet. Um, this hat I have, I got this years ago. It is super low um, excitement, but <laughs> the kids love it. So here I am walking around the room with my ukulele, really honestly just playing a C chord. Whoops. And my strap needs to be tightened up. So I'm walking around and um, the kids, we get into a big circle um, and the kids are sitting in a circle and we meet all the little puppets. They will swim around the circle until the shark comes out. And um, so then I walk around and we sing one last time. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. And then I lean over, whoever is the closest kid, and I go, Ow. And I say, I am the head shark, and so I get to choose who to bite. And so I lean over, and a, like, I don't know, a foot above the kid's head, I just make a chomping sound. And the kid goes, Ugh, you know, and they're excited that they're the one who got caught. And I say, okay, now you got bit by the shark. Now you stand up. And usually if we're doing like a, a game like um, Old King Gloria on the Mountain or something else where you like walk around, usually that one kid always stays in the front. And so you, they tap someone's head and they have to stand up and get in line behind them or whatever. That's usually how these games work. This one, I made up the song, silly basic little song. And so I made up a silly little game and I changed up the game. So in this game, instead of going to the end of the line, you go to the front of the line and you get to be the new head shark. So then you swim around and that kid at the very end gets to lean over and chomp. And then whoever stands up becomes the new head shark and they get to walk around and lead the line and then they chomp. So it's just, it's a super fun song. Everybody gets to chomp. Whoever's at the end um, gets to either chomp me or chomp anyone else of their choice. But it's just a super silly, fun little song. Um, and I love this shark hat. It was not expensive. I don't know where I got it, but I'm sure you could find a way cooler one. His little fin flips, flops over. I need to find a way to like stuff him with like pillow batting, like that um, cotton batting stuff because he is a little sad. Anyway, I'm thinking about wearing him for the upcoming Commotion in the Ocean concert. But anyway, so this um, is just a shark hat. I never let kids put it on because lice. But I love this little hat and I've had it for years. So um, we go through, we do that. Um, they already know the song, so adding the game is, is no sweat. Um, and when we're done with the song, we're all at that point then walking around the room and it's easy to transition over to the next place that we're gonna go. So we go over to my green chair to read a book and to move on to sort of the next thing. But I like doing that because it gets all the kids um, chomping and all of them singing and all of them, they, they just like think that song is so hilarious and they love that each one of them gets to be the head shark at least once. So anyway, it's a fun song. Um, this next activity comes, it's honestly, I think I've seen it at like four or five workshops. Um, I don't know if it all traces back to this fabulous book, but um, the version I do is sort of like the one in here. Um, Mallet Madness, if you don't have by Artie Alameda, is a really, really great book. Um, I, know, I know I said as American as Apple Pie is like the second best purchase I made as a music teacher, um, second after paying for ORF levels. This is the second best. This is probably third or fourth. It's in the top 10. It's a really great book, especially if you are not um, ORF trained or if you're not an ORFy person. This gives you a lot of really accessible ways to get started and at least to use the instruments in ways that maybe you wouldn't have thought of on your own. It's really great. It's got a, a ton of really fun resources that you can start with and move with and it's totally worth the whatever it is you pay for it, like 30 bucks or something. So I have a link to that online too. But um, the book that we're gonna read is this one called Mortimer. 
Now, what we've done in the previous lessons, we did an instrument exploration activity based around Jack and Jill, um, where they go up the hill and down the hill and the kids get to hold mallets and make them go up the instrument and down the instrument. And I literally take the instrument and I tip it up on its side so it's almost vertical. So not really, it looks more like a hill, but they, they get that experience. In this lesson, we're gonna do something sort of similar. And again, we're trying to make that connection between up being a high sound and low, down being a low sound. <laughs> But anyway, it starts with this book called Mortimer, and if you don't know it, I'll read just a couple pages. But this book, Mortimer, is by Robert Munch. I think it's Munch. I don't know if it's actually Munch. It might be Munch or something else, but I, I say Munch because we just did a song about chomping, and so now we're doing a song about made by someone who Munch. Munch. Anyway, now the kids like it. So anyway, one night, Mortimer's mother took him upstairs to bed. Thump. Bum, thump, 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 And it's fun because the picture actually shows the word thump up. And I stop and I say, hmm, what do you think that sound is? And they, and someone goes, oh, it's the mom's feet on the stairs. You're right, the mom's feet on the stairs. Okay. When they got upstairs, Mortimer's mother opened the door to his room. She threw him into bed and said, Mortimer, be quiet. Mortimer shook his head. Yes. I usually change that word from shook his head to nodded his head because if I say shook his head, they go like this. So I don't know. I changed that. Mortimer nodded his head. Yes. Meaning he was going to do what? And they go, he was going to be quiet. The mother shut the door and she went back down the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. As soon as she got back downstairs, Mortimer sang. Now in, in Artie's book, I can never... I don't do her version because I can, I can never remember when I have the book open what her melody is. <laughs> it's a good melody, so if you have Mal Madness, you can use her melody. Um, but I can just never remember when the when I'm open with the book with kids there, like, like I don't remember what it is she did. So the version I do is. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. It really doesn't matter what you do. You can just come up with your own little clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, he sings a song um, and there are different versions. And I stop and I have them look at the pictures and I go, do, were there really n notes literally coming out of his mouth? Did he actually have notes floating out of his mouth? And they go, no. Well, and what are these? And we talk about how the artist has added these in to represent music. Because you can't actually see sound, right? So we, talk, we talked just a tiny little bit about that because there's something that comes back later. So guess what? Dad comes up the stairs, thump, 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 thump. And he opens the door and yells, Mortimer, be quiet. And it follows this pattern that mom and then dad and then all the sisters and brothers. And obviously Mortimer goes, yes. I'll be quiet. And then once they're gone, he's not quiet. So it follows that pattern. It goes mom, dad, sisters, and brothers. Um, we talked about those music notes at first, right? Because those, there's music notes coming out of his mouth, but there's not really music coming out of his mouth. It's just the artist representation. So when we get to this one, I say, are they really throwing stars at him? And they go, no. Well, then what are those? And they go, they're, they're mad. They're mad at him. I go, yeah, this is like a, a visual way to show them being angry and using angry voices. These are not happy voices. These are angry voices. And so um, I, I, t I take the time to sort of talk about that. And I love stopping in books to talk about illustrations because a lot of times this sort of just goes over kids' heads. But if you draw attention to it, 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 it makes, it helps a lot of them make connections that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. So I, I take the time to stop and do that because we're going to do the story again anyway. Anyway, so Mortimer obviously like goes nuts. So then they call two policemen to come in and they come up the stairs slowly, thump, thump, thump. And so that's a fun change. Um, and then Mortimer, you know, Mortimer is like, okay, maybe I will be quiet. So when they go downstairs... No one knew what to do. They all started arguing. You can see there are lots of those little stars, the angry stars. And um, nobody comes up to check on Mortimer because they're all just arguing on their own downstairs and he falls asleep. And so, so sometimes in some classes we've talked about, you know, why does Mortimer fall asleep? Well, <clears throat> because he really just wanted attention and nobody came up to check on him. So he 
he ends up going to sleep. It's a fun little book. It's super easy. The kids like it. They always chime in with the Mortimer, be quiet, because they love taking on the role of like the angry teacher, the angry parent, to chide that child, you know, Mortimer, be quiet. So they're all about that. Um, they like doing the thumps with me, trying to do a vocal version of the thumps. Um, and then the next step is so fun and simple for them because I take out the instruments and I say, now we get to do our story again. But this time we're gonna use the instruments. We're not gonna set it up like a hill, like Jack and Jill, because that's, you know, you'd fall up those stairs and you'd fall down the stairs and we don't want anyone to fall because in the book, it never says, no one falls down the stairs. So we can't have any falling like that. So we can't prop them up quite like this. So instead, we're just gonna take our instruments and we're gonna just turn it a little bit. Can you see the stairs? And I hold, I hold it just like this and they go, yeah. And then I go, so is this down the stairs and up the stairs? And they go, no. And I go, down the stairs to up the stairs? Yes. So they can see the visual before they hear the sound. What I do to prop up the instruments a few years ago, at the end of summer, um, Target had all of these like plastic cups and bowls and serving things in super fun, bright colors. Um, and so I bought a set of cups for cup passing games and bowls. I didn't know what I was gonna do with the bowls, but I bought them because they were like a dollar for like 10. It was on clearance. Um, they're super sturdy though, because they're made for camping and they're made to be beaten up. And so I just take one of these and I set it underneath the high side to sort of prop this up. And I like it because they're actually pretty wide and so the instrument isn't gonna just slip off and they have a really wide base, so they're not gonna topple over. So they're really actually very good stands for this side of the instrument. Um, and it, I prop up each one, I even prop up my big xylophones and things and they, they stand up really well. And like I said, I bought these, I think in my first year of teaching, super cheap so you could go probably to like a target or a walmart or a dollar tree and buy something like it or just know that you know when target summer stuff comes around they might have those camping things anyway so we take our instruments that have been propped up and now when we get to the part where the family goes up and down the stairs they're literally tapping up and down the stairs. And like I said, we did something like this with Jack and Jill, only it's just a little bit more controlled. Cause I said, you know, the mom and dad, they go up every single step. So you're gonna try and get every bar on the way up. And then they're not gonna fall down the stairs. So you can't go, you know, mom and dad are not gonna fall. You're gonna have to bring them back down the stairs. And we get to the police officers, they go up slowly and down slowly. So you're gonna have to go right? So I have enough instruments that I was able to get about mm, a little over a third, close to half of my kids on instruments at one time. But I realized today I'm going to run out of time if I do the whole book and then try and transition. And it's going to be a pain in the butt to transition halfway through. What am I going to do? So I spaced them out a little bit more and I had um, the instruments setting out and I had one kid sit on each side. So one kid, so one kid sat here, the other one sat here. Each one got one mallet and so that they could share the stairway going up and share the stairway going down, which worked great, except I had about six extra kids. <laughs> so what did I do? Um, I pulled out my contrabass bar for C and somewhere I have my mallet. I don't know what I did with it. It's probably under a puppet, yep. And I have my super huge contrabass bar mallet. So whoever had the contrabass bar mallet got to be mom or dad. And they went, Mortimer, be quiet. And then they went, boom, boom, boom. And then they got to, whenever that, that character was there, they got to um, hold the huge mallet and play on the big bar. That made, the, they were like, we're good with that. Okay. So um, we, I had enough that I ended up one for mom, one for dad, two or three for the brothers and sisters because they're supposed to be like seven of each and then two of the police officers and we made it all the way through. And we got all the kids done. We only did the story one more time and they all just, you know, going up, going down, going up, down, going down and they sang Mortimer's little song. Um, you could do it when they do the clang, 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 rattle, bing, bang. When they do that song, you could have them play. It just gets really crazy, but... If you want to 
have it be real crazy, you can have it be real crazy. So anyway, but it's a, it's a super fun story. They love the story on its own and they would be happy with just reading the book. Adding the instruments is a fun next step and it's, it's great for the instrument exploration and also for them to be more, like we've done a couple instrument exploration things and so this sort of makes them take on a little bit more responsibility because their, their task now is to get all the bars, not to just zoom up and down, but to really try and make the steps of going up the stairs and going down the stairs um, on the bars. And so it, it's a fun next step for them and they really, they love it. Uh, Karen says, do both students play going up and down or does one play and the other one play going down? I did not tell them today. I just said, you have to share the instrument. So they made it work. Some of the kids that like one would go and then the next would go. Some would like let one kid be like two steps ahead. And some they were just like, whatever. And they did it together. So you can do whatever you want. If you want to add more control or, or say like you got a trade off or whatever, you could do that. But I didn't have the time for that today. And also the kids just sort of took over it, took it over on their own. So um, it was just sort of fun to see what they came up with on that. You could also just do one set of students and then transition and one set of students. You could have, if you don't have a lot of instruments, you could have, you know, some of them on the instruments and then other kids could do like a dance or could do, they could do a dance version of what they thought Mortimer was um, dancing as he sang. You could do whatever you want. Um, but I, I love using the mallet for Mortimer, be quiet. And the kids love taking on that character because they think it's hilarious when they get to be like the authoritarian figure. So anyway, this is a great book, um, sort of loosely based on the lesson plan in this book. This is a great, great one because like I said, it has a ton of great things in it. Really wonderful if you're just starting out on ORF instruments, or even if you're not, if you just want some more ideas, this is a great book. Um, there's also Mallet Madness 2, the second one, so you could check that out. But I think that the original is the best one. Um, all of the books and all of the things that I've talked about um, are linked on the video links page, um, including all of those books. If you're just now tuning in, I started out by talking about these great books, um, perfect for Black History Month, but also there are some um, great ideas you could use for putting them in sub um, substitute teacher lessons or um, in the next month is Women's History Month so a lot of these books are about um, women of color and so there are some really great books that you could put in there um, but all of the puppets and things that I've talked about if they're available online I put links to them so check that out on there and also starting tonight at midnight and running tomorrow Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, there is a sale on Teachers Pay Teachers. So if there's anything from my store or other people's stores that you're like, I've been waiting, now's your chance. You can get it 25% off if you put TikTok in the checkout. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great sale. I know there are a couple things that I'm like, Annie Lee Miracle and Lindsay Jarvis, these things I've been looking at, I'm gonna to totally go get. So if you have any questions about this lesson or anything else, um, please shoot me an email. My email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com. You can also just direct message me here on Facebook or Instagram and I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, I go back through these comments. So if you've left a comment and I did not answer it, I'm so sorry. Um, but I will, um, I will go and answer that as best I can throughout the week. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great week and um, have so much fun teaching your kids this week.